All right, you lot, this is Keith Cooks. I'm Keith, and today I'm mighty relieved because it's the end of Veganuary, so I'm not doing any more vegan stuff ever again. My goodness. Um, I know a lot of you liked it, and a lot of you hated it, and I'm kind of, you know, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, proper meat, and it is snowing. So, for a nice, cold, snowy day, what we need is a nice warming stew. I'm going to make the Liverpool classic Scouse. A few parish notices before we start. A big shout out to Joe Delaney and his girlfriend Kate down there in Australia. I uh, hope you're all right. And a massive thank you to a recent donor on PayPal, Jenny Callum in North Carolina. Thank you, appreciate it. And a big old shout to Brenda Rigdon in Florida, who is a scouter, or used to be, and has actually helped me a little bit with this recipe, so uh, we'll talk more about that later. She's a proper scouter, born and bred. I am an honorary scouter. Oh yes, I am, because I lived there, I met my wife there, I got married there, and um, I think our son was conceived there, so I'm here. Uh, so if I get any scousers saying woolly backs can't, make scouts. Um, I'm sorry, I think you're wrong. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, uh, become a patron, make a donation, etc. And without further ado, let's uh, do it. Ingredients for my scouts, I've got half a kilo of stewing beef, half a kilo of lamb ribs, a load of potatoes, a couple of carrots and a large onion in instalments and salt and white pepper also beef stock and it is perfectly acceptable to make it up from a couple of oxo cubes so the choice of meat is a bit controversial i've always understood that traditionally it would be lamb actually it would be mutton which is three-year-old sheep i've got these scraggy ribs with lots of fat and you know a kind of sandwich of meat and fat and that is that's just going to be so flavoursome not actually very common in real life every scouse that i've had in a pub or a cafe in liverpool has been made with beef yeah, go figure. Anyway, a compromise because uh, Bren Rigdon sent me some photos of a tea towel that she's had for a very long time that contains some actual recipes for scouts. One is the 1864 Birkenhead Workhouse recipe. We won't be doing that one. Um, we'll be doing more like the, um, the luxury recipe, which has not only beef and lamb, but also black pudding. We won't be doing the black pudding because I haven't got any. But, um, and I've never ever come across that in scouts. however. So to start cooking it, I'm just gonna cut my ribs into kind of bite-sized chunks. Oh, there's actual bone there. <laughs> so cancel that, uh, I need to trim that bone off. Because, well, I can't cut through it. But I will, but I will pop it in the pot with um, the rest of the things. Okay, that's my massive pile of um, lamb and the rib bones, which uh, oh, this <laughs> this is going to be so tasty. I cannot wait. And now the beef. Um, some of this is. It, it wants to be bite-sized as well, that, so that's okay. That's too long. So I'll just trim those down as well. If you are just using beef, um, chuck is reckoned to be a good cut. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, you, you want it sort of marbled with some fat in it. This This was just generic supermarket stewing beef. It'll be okay. Okay, now I just need to peel my onions and kind of dice them. And you might be wondering if I'm going to brown the meat before plunging it into uh, stock. No, I'm not. It's, uh, it's not a thing you need to do with this, this kind of peasant stew um, really 
you know, browning the meat is uh, it's a bit Frenchified, and, and people say it's to seal the flavour in, but I, I don't really understand that. When you're cooking it in a pot, in a liquid, liquid um, where's your flavour going to go? It's not going to escape from the pan at all, so uh, it's still in there. Anyway, keep it simple, don't be tempted to add things that don't belong in it. Really the only other thing you could put in it is, but you know, maybe some parsley would be allowed. Um, and other root veg like uh, turnip or swede or leeks, maybe, if you've got them or if you want. This is just, this is just a basic thing. And you may or may not know the origin of the name Scouse comes from uh, Norwegian lobscouse, which was the uh, Norwegian sailors used to come to Liverpool and they would bring their lobscouse and uh, the scousers stole it and stole the name and um, yeah, and that's how it happened. Personally, I'd call it beef stew, but um, that might be heresy. Right, in you go. Top it up with stock and actually some extra water because it's not quite covering the meat and the onion. So we pop the pot on the stove, turn on the heat on high and bring it to the boil. And when it comes to a boil, turn down the heat so it's just simmering, put on a tight fitting lid and leave it for one and a half hours. And we're not bothered about removing that scum because uh, it's not oak cuisine. So the stovetop pot method will take about three, out, three to three and a half hours altogether um, because after one and a half hours I'll put the um, potatoes and carrots in. I'm not putting them in now because they'll be too just too mushy. If you're in a hurry you can use a pressure cooker or one of these newfangled instant pot things which I think is just a fancy name for a pressure cooker and that will take mm, maybe 20-30 minutes. You want your meat really really tender or you can do it the slow way in a crock pot or a slow cooker um, and it will probably take 8-10 to 10 hours. So plenty of cooking options whatever suits you. When I was researching Scouse for this video, I came across a website called Global Scouse Day, which is um, a wonderful thing to celebrate Scouse, the food, by having it available on restaurant, cafe, bar menus, um, not just in Liverpool, uh, but throughout the UK and the world. So you lot, I know you're mostly all over the world, you could get your local bar to copy my recipe on Global Scouse Day, which in 2020 is the 28th of February. So how about that? Give it a go, eh? So I peeled the potatoes and cut all the nasty bits off and chopped them into chunks, um, somewhat smaller than bite size. And then I've done the same with the carrots. And we put them in with the meat and the onion, and you might need some more water and then bring that to the boil and simmer it with the lid on again for another 90 minutes and then we'll check it for seasoning and if everything's not falling apart we'll cook it for a bit longer but it, it'll probably be okay after three hours I should think but keep stirring it and make sure it doesn't stick otherwise you'll burn your scouse and nobody likes burnt scouse so it's at its three hours I've just tasted it everything's really tender and falling off the bone if it's got one so I'm just going to add a bit of seasoning, so that will be half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of white pepper, not black pepper. As I recall as a kid, uh, black pepper was something that happened to other people. We always had white pepper. So stir that in, have a little taste and it's fabulous. Okay. <laughs> It's taste test time with Earth. Uh, I'm Mrs. Keith Cox, are you? <laughs> Mrs. Keith Cox! Do you want a big lipstick? Kiss. Later.
later. Right, right. so here it is. Um, Scouse avec uh, token parsley for the photo. <laughs> and pickled red cabbage. Or some people like pickled red beetroot. As long as it's red and sharp. Yeah. And crunchy. Yeah. I was very good before. I was looking at this in the pan. Mm. Uh, oh, ooh, that's well cooked down. Mm. So avoid dishing up any bones. Yeah, I only know about scouse. Maybe <coughs> mutton. From living in scouse land. Yeah, but you get the <laughs> but you get the, the fat on the mutton and that goes into the texture of it and then it's offset by the sharp stuff. But I just carefully explained how Nobody in Liverpool actually makes it with mutton anymore. They all oh. do it with beef. Nobody makes anything with mutton anymore. It has to be lamb, darlings. But I like the uh, I know what, the animal fat. Mmm. Mm. Gosh. Mm. Yeah. But I was really surprised. You what? know, when you said this morning that you've had people saying, no, 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 it's got to be made with beef. So. Well. I don't mind. Each to his own. But it's, it's actually half and half. Ah. Half scrag lamb and uh -huh. half beef. Right. And oh. Well, my take on this is this is a really good winter meal. Mm. Mm -hmm. It stops snowing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But this stuff does actually improve with time. Mm. So um, if you can. It's going to last an hour. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're getting fed up of us going, mmm, ah, mmm, 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 mm. Probably. Okay. It's good though. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> mm. really lovely deep flavour. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you all next time.